welcome to Mr. P's uh, ceramics class. Um, I'm going to demonstrate to you today how to use the Giffen Grip. The Giffen Grip is used to trim pots on the wheel. And I'm going to trim for you today a bowl. And most of you will be making this, you know, pieces like this. And then I'm going to show you how to trim a larger piece uh, like this base, okay? Um, this is the Giffen Grip. It's a uh, a uh, plastic mechanical device that you use to hold the pot down, okay? And the way it works is there's a two-part assembly. If I hold this bottom part, I can make the top part rotate. And you can see that the arms move in tighter or they move further away. Sometimes these get jammed and the way you fix this, it just pops onto the uh, wheel head, okay? And there's a plastic O-ring there and I take that off and I lift off the top, okay? And you can see these slide out, and you can see that there's just a lot of dust in here, and that keeps the tracks from moving around. So I just kind of set it off to the side, and I can shake that out. And you can see now where it's going to insert the different uh, pads, okay? So I kind of clean that out, and I'm going to line the edges up with these three points. So I reinsert it, okay, and line it up, because you might have to adjust this on your own sometime, and I put the three pegs now back in, okay? I set that in, okay, and then I put the O-ring back on the bottom, and that snaps it together. And again, with the three plastic arms, that fits snugly over the wheel head, and now again, holding the bottom, I can tighten this down or I can loosen it up, okay? So with any pot, as long as it's generally circular, I can set that onto it and I cinch it down. And I kind of just make it snug, okay? And again, just sets down, tighten that down, and now it's snug in there, okay? The wheel is on and you can see now how, I'm going to take this out for one second. You can see how heavy, bottom heavy, this bowl looks like, okay? And when I trim it, it's going to really float and have a nice foot ring to it. So I set it upside down, lock it in, and I use my finger on my left hand. This is a right-handed uh, procedure, even if you're left-handed, and because the wheel's going counterclockwise, and I use my left hand and with my carving tool, and I use the big hoop carving tool, I'm just rounding out the pot. And I trim the pot when it's leather hard. And see how it comes off almost like taffy, okay? And so what I'm trying to trim is I'm visualizing a dome shape, okay? So you can see now, I'm sure it's still even in the camera, you can see this still, this kind of like, here's the pot coming up, and now there's that extra hump of clay that needs to be trimmed down. So I know I'm not going to trim through the bottom of my pot. So I trim and I round out the shape. I trim and I'm just moving with my right hand, creating like this dome shape. And I'm using just a little bit of pressure with my left hand. If I don't, if I'm just pushing on this, this pot will spin off the Giffen grip, so I don't want that to happen. So I'm just holding kind of steady with my left hand, just a little bit of pressure. And see now how I'm trimming this down. As I go down, I taper it. And now I have a nice dome shape, okay? A nice dome shape. So I've trimmed all that excess clay around off because that also could make it too thick and it would explode. I'm now gonna use this carving tool, it's the long one, there's a round hoop tool end, and there's a square hoop tool end. I'm gonna hold it like a pencil. It's the most comfortable way, okay? And again, even if you're left-handed, you have to do this with your right hand. I'm gonna start right in the center, and I'm gonna move outward, okay? So I start in the center, and I move outward, like at a three o'clock. And right before that edge, I stop, and I leave about the thickness of a finger, pencil, the carving tool, and I can tell how far am I trimming down if it has a hollow sound. That doesn't sound hollow, so it tells me 
I can go down even a little bit further, okay, to make a nice foot ring on this. So that makes my center indentation. And now, on the outside edge that comes up, I'm going to take my carving tool, and I'm going to put it at a right angle. I'm using my left hand just to support it, the pot, and now I trim in at a right angle and see how I'm carving, literally almost carving a foot ring into the pot, okay? And so I'll take this off for a second so you can see what I've developed. I've trimmed from the center to the outside. I left the width of a finger, pencil, carving tool. Then I came in at a right angle, okay? And I carved down into it to establish the foot ring. So I'm gonna put this back in. Okay, might be a little bit off center, but I can adjust that. So now I fix that. Now then I go back to my carving tool, the larger hoop one, and I use the narrow edge and I go back to that outside edge and I continue trimming a dome shape. And I'm taking off even more thickness. And I trim that down and I'm continually rounding out the shape. Again, I'm not going to trim through the bottom of the pot. So I come up there, round it out. I'm gonna fine tune it, make that edge. And you're really kind of like carving, sculpting into the pot itself, okay? If I wanna create, I can go at a 45 degree angle just to you know, make a nice tapered edge. I can also use my carving tool if I want to make designs. See, so I'm coming in and that's going to make a texture with the pot. Okay, and then I stop. So that's what the foot ring looks like. So I further trimmed it. And now when I set it down, how it started, it was very thick and heavy. And now it just really floats like that. And that's really elegant, okay? I'm going to now show you a second one, okay? A taller piece okay this if I set it upside down and I lock it in with the Giffen grip okay even using my hand that's going to be a little unstable okay and it could tip off so the way you work with that is I move the arms all the way to the outside of the Giffen grip and I reverse them okay and you'll notice that there's a little hole on the end. And I have different size arms that I can use to trim the piece. So when I set this upside down, the arms help support it. And so I can get the right type of size that I need. I go even down to very small ones, but obviously that's not really gonna help support it. So I'm gonna use the tallest ones, and I set those in to those holes. And that now sets it at a, like about a 30 degree angle. Now when I move this in, those little arms, and I kind of just balance it so I make contact on all sides, see now that's holding it. And the advantage to that is that when I'm now trimming it, I'm not spending, you know, using my left hand to support that. I could, on the bowl down the road, if you wanted to, you could use the small arms to support that, and that's possible, and that prevents you from needing to use your left hand there, okay? So let's trim this piece. Again, notice, looking at it upside down, how thick and heavy that is. So just by habit, I put my left hand there anyways, even though it is supported by these arms. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm trimming that outside edge, and I'm rounding out the thickness, okay? And again, even if I didn't have my left hand there, again, the arms are supporting it. Don't use so much pressure. Don't try and trim it all at once because you will push it off center. And again, notice how the pot comes up and then there's that extra little bulge. That tells me all of that can be trimmed away, okay? So I'm now rounding this out. Notice my wheel speed this whole time has been about medium fast, okay? Don't go too slow, because if you go slowly, then you can't hold your hand that steady. And if you go way too fast, 
the piece starts shaking and vibrating and then it's out of control. So I'm going about a medium speed when I'm trimming on the Giffen grip. And see, so now I'm rounding out that edge again. Visualize again a dome shape, okay? So now there's just that little groove right there and so I'm blending it in, okay? I'm matching it, okay? I'm rounding it out. I ease up my pressure as I come around the round part of the pot. And see how I'm just rounding that out, trimming it. Already it looks so much better. Smoothing that out. Just a little bit more matching, okay? Again, come up to that edge. And now I'm just gently tapering it off, okay? So again, I have a nice round edge to it. I'm gonna tap on it. Sounds kind of thick, doesn't have a hollow sound, so I know I can trim a little bit further down into it. So again, I hold my carving tool like a pencil. I also like to lock my wrist that helps support it. I start from the middle and I move outwards. And again, I stop about the thickness of a pencil, finger, the carving tool, tap down on it. I can tell that I can still come down a little bit further, trimming, okay? And so just like the last piece, I'm gonna now come up at a little bit 45 degree angle just to taper that nicely. On the outside edge, again, I'm gonna come in at a right angle, okay? And by coming in at a right angle, that now establishes the foot ring, just like the smaller piece. And from that outside edge, I'm going to continue trimming kind of like a dome shape. So I put that small wedge into the point there, into the right to the corner of where the foot ring is. And again, trim leather hard. Notice how again, see how the clay is really coming off, kind of like taffy. Okay, and if it's too soft, it'll be too gummy and your carving tool will grab. And if it's too dry, then you're not really able to get a nice contour to the piece. So again, I'm going around, trimming that really nicely. I'm gonna fine tune it with my carving tool. Okay, gonna round that out and cleaning that up. One other thing I can do too, is I'm gonna reach forward here, I have a little sponge. And I can do this on the previous piece. I always like to finish it just with a sponge. Just covers and hides any carving marks. Just smooths it down. So now I stop the wheel. I again move it backwards, okay? I can take the little arms out. And now when I trim that piece, so there's what it looks like on the bottom. Really nice foot ring edge comes there. The other nice thing is that the glaze will go right up to that edge of the corner and then gravity will just start melting right to the very bottom of the pot. So now when I turn that upside down, again, see how nicely it floats. And that's what really gives pottery that nice elegance, okay? So that's trimming using the Giffen Grip. Thanks so much.